I'm going to go ahead and finish the, my presentation from yesterday, uh, just to kind of uh, give us some wrap up. And then we'll have the uh, student presenters present. I know people are coming in. I'm going to go ahead and record this. Uh, even though some people aren't here, they can watch the video version of it. Um, the weather isn't real cooperative today. I don't know how wet you guys are, but I got wet here. Uh, but uh, Yesterday we were talking about AP style. Another area of AP style is punctuation. Um, so generally the use of dashes and commas in place of parentheses. Uh, so in other words, if you have parenthetical information that you feel like you need to add, uh, there are times when you use the, the parentheses. There's also times where you just use commas to set that information off. Uh, so, anyway, going on, uh, use, it, use parentheses uh, to insert into a direct quote information that you think is needed for clarification. So if the direct quote is they, and it means the firefighters, you can put in parentheses the firefighters will refuse the contract, said the union leader of the Connell, and in abbreviation, or in parentheses, uh, uh, Washington abbreviation, fire department. So there are times when you do use parentheses. Um, other, there are other times when you don't, and I'll come back to that if I don't see that covered here already someplace else. Um, use a hyphen. Again, I, as I, I think I ended yesterday, the hyphen and the, com, uh, hyphen and the dash are two. They look similar, but they're different. So the hyphen is a, com, uh, you use it to, uh, for example, the compound adjectives. So, for example, up here you have the, uh, uh, the coal black chimney. So coal black is not a coal chimney. It's not a black chimney. It's a coal black. It's a, a color like coal, coal black chimney. Uh, or if you say the 10-year-old girl. So 10-year-old becomes an adjective, a compound adjective with, with hyphens in it, if it comes, particularly if it comes before, the na before the, uh, what it's referring to. So it's referring to the girl, and it comes before that. So 10-year-old 10 10 year girl becomes a hyphenated adjective. Um, use the hyphen when prefixes to proper names, like un-American, pre-Christian, something like that. Use apostrophe to form the plural of letters, but uh, but not numbers, such as uh, A's, B's, C's. Uh, you would, because they're only one, particularly because they're only one, uh, well, I guess it would be true also, I think, with, uh, with multiple, but particularly if it's a single letter, you, you don't want it to, it would look kind of, well, it'd be, it'd spell the word as if you didn't put the apostrophe in. So if you're talking about, you know, getting A's in your homework, uh, you need to do something to, to distinguish that from the word as. So you put an apostrophe in there. Uh, 1980s, however, you don't bother to put the apostrophe in. That's fine. Uh, that's not confusing. Omit apostrophes from organizational names such as the National Football Players Association. So that uh, a player, normally, if, if it were not part of a name, you'd put a, an apostrophe after the S in players because it's the Players Association. So it, it is possessive. But in a, in a proper, in an organizational name, you don't uh, put in the apostrophe. Uh, more on punctuation. Avoid superfluous use of commas, but don't violate standard rules. For example, when you use a series, the comma is generally omitted in AP style from before uh, the and or the or that would precede the last item, such as give us a book, a pencil, uh, and an eraser. So after pencil, you don't, uh, AP would have you drop off the, the, the comma. Um, it's not grammatically incorrect to put it there. It's AP style to, if it's not needed, don't put it in. And that's a case where they don't think it's needed. Uh, if it's a more complicated series than this, and this is a very simple series, a book, a pencil, and a, an eraser, uh, if it's, if it's kind of confusing without putting the comma in, you put the comma in. Standard English rules say that either form is correct with or without the comma. In journalism, however, we avoid superfluity. In AP Stylebook, uh, the AP Stylebook has an excellent uh, punctuation guide, as I've mentioned. So uh, don't, you know, don't hesitate to look it up and see the different uh, how to use the different punctuations uh, for very clear 
e explanations and examples. And we'll have somebody in class uh, show us some of those. Pronouns. Make sure the antecedent for every pronoun is clear. So if you have a, if you have a pronoun, ask yourself whether or not it's obvious what the pronoun, that pronoun refers to. Sometimes it is not. Uh, so as an editor, you have to look, at, look for those sorts of things. Uh, the antecedent is the word, uh, phrase, or clause to which a pronoun refers. So double check any sentences using the pronoun it, um, for example. To each person, uh, to which person does he refer to uh, in the second sentence that follows? McCain says Obama is breaking his promises to America. He wants voters to understand the issues. So who does he refer to? Uh, McCain or Obama? Um, he, in this case, if you, ha you know, you may have to read it two or three times to understand it, you, you probably conclude that it refers to McCain. But as an editor, again, you must uh, eliminate all such questions. Replace he with McCain. Uh, by the way, I would, we've talked about it a little bit in the past, there are some cases where if, you're, if you think somebody might be checking up on your note taking, like there's multiple, there's multiple uh, uh, reporters in the same talking to somebody, that's where also you could put, if it's a direct quote, you would put in parentheses McCain. If you're by yourself and you're the only reporter interviewing the person, this is where I might, on my own, just put McCain in instead of he, knowing it doesn't make any difference and knowing that the person I'm interviewing won't care. And so if, I, if, if there's nobody to double check my notes, I would just change he to McCain, if it's, uh, even if it's in a direct quote, but if there are other reporters, then I would put he, parentheses, McCain, um, uh, in, in a direct quote. Outside of a direct quote, you definitely put McCain there. Uh, check, the, sorry, check the number and gender of all pronouns, but particularly those that replace collective nouns. So collective nouns are nouns like city council, class, team. Um, those represent more than one person, but they are actually singular. It's only one city council, but there are lots of city council members. There is only one class, but there's lots of class members. There's only one team, but there's lots of team members. So the pronoun in each of these cases is it, it's not they. But that's one of the most common mistakes uh, is to replace, uh, to use a pronoun in one of these collective, to one of these collective nouns uh, with uh, they. Uh, if you feel like you have to go to plural, then uh, uh, you need to actually just put in the, 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 uh, the words in. So if, if you feel like you have to go to the plural form, then instead of saying they, you say the council members. So go ahead and put in both words and, and get it now change the noun to members and go to, uh, to your plural uh, verb uh, or pronoun or whatever it is that you're trying to match. Figures or numbers. Generally spell out numbers from one through nine Spell them out uh, using uh, digits for all numbers 10 and above. That's the general rule. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are all spelled out, uh, whereas 16, 60, 1,000, whatever, anything above, anything 10 or above, any double-digit numbers, you go ahead and put in numbers. However, there are exceptions to that rule. Don't spell out numbers with fractions, such as 1.5, or decimals, 1.5, uh, or monetary, $1.00. Uh, or a sports score, one to nothing, one to zero, um, or a time, 1 p.m. Those are all kept in numerical form, figure form, if you would. And so uh, you just have to remember some of the exceptions. And if you think about it logically, it wouldn't, you know, like if you want to, if you had to spell out, you know, put into words one and a half, that's a lot of words to replace one and a half. Um, you know, one dollar, again, you just you start adding words for no good reason, and, and in fact, it is confusing to people because they're not used to seeing these things in, in word form. Uh, spell out all numbers that begin sentences. So no matter what, um, what, what I do, by the way, that's not just an AP style, that's also APA style. It's, that's that's uh, consistent with most style sheets is if it, 
if a number starts a sentence, you have to write it out. Uh, it doesn't look good to put uh, the number one or the number whatever, any number, at the start of a sentence. It doesn't, it doesn't look right. So almost every, I don't know of any style, uh, academic or journalistic, that does not tell you to spell out a number if it comes at the start of a sentence. Um, however, what I do sometimes, I try to avoid that. And so I might say, if it's not, if it's a kind of a rounded number, I might say about. So I, if, it's, if the number is actually 69, I don't want to spell out 69 at the start of the sentence. And so I might say about 70. Um, you know, so it doesn't make sense to say about 69. That's a very precise number. But I could say about 70. And so the real number is 69, and I don't want to spell it out. So I, I avoid it by saying about. Um, so there's other ways of avoiding it too, but I try not to let a number come at the start of a sentence because I don't want to spell out, you know, a, a, a number like 69 or 982 or whatever, especially you start getting to bigger numbers. Like um, in my survey, I had, what, 762 respondents or something. I don't want to spell that out at the start of a sentence. So I'm going to do everything I can to avoid putting that number at the start of a sentence. Uh, we, we went over this a little bit yesterday, and uh, later today I'm going to have you actually do a, a little uh, exercise to practice this. It's, it's hard for me to say that this is important anymore, although I use it. I do, I do use it quite often myself. Um, just when, you know, I, I sometimes like to print out something and, and, gra and uh, you know, edit it, review it grade it, whatever I'm doing. And so I automatically start using the, uh, the editing symbols uh, as they're shown here. Uh, they're a little bit inconsistent with what I use, as I mentioned the other day. Um, I, most people that I know use, when they do transpositions, they use more, you know, more rounded edges. You can transpose letters like this or words. So in this case, it should be or words uh, or mixed up. And here, it's the letters, it's supposed to be letters. Um, and so you can tra transpose letters within a word if you need to. Um, let me just kind of review this, this uh, version of the copy editing. This is, like say, my copy editing here. Uh, so I get, wanted to get rid of this uh, word here. I, I slash and close. So this is the closure mark. Some people would have closed underneath. With an entire word, I think a closure mark and top is fine. Here I'm trying to get, a, get rid of, get rid of, so slash and close. Um, here with individual letters, then I still, as you see here, in this case, just a direct slash and a close. And here I put a closure mark in top and bottom, kind of whatever I feel like. I mentioned that if you, the zero basically, or the O, the circle, basically means do the opposite. So that since this is below 10, this should be spelled out. So I put a circle around it. This is more than 10, and so I put a circle around that, meaning make it into the figures, put it in the numbers. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that uh, a, an exact street address, in an exact street address, street should be uh, abbreviated, so I circle to say abbreviate this word. So it kind of means do the opposite. Here, it does not have a specific house number, so it's not a specific address, so in this case it should be spelled out, so I circle to say spell it out. Um, over here, I want to split this into two paragraphs. So this is just a, a paragraph uh, mark here. Uh, here, I want to capitalize uh, the C and city and the C and council. So three, three lines under it tell you to capitalize it. Um, same here with council. Councilman, it comes before his name. Therefore, it should be capitalized. So I underline that three times to capitalize that. Be careful, these look very much like the, sla the slash and close mark up here. So the only way I'm going to know whether you mean to lowercase, the slash here at a diagonal means the lowercase. Astronaut is not a formal title in America. It's a descriptive title like farmer or something like that. So it's not supposed to be capitalized. So the slash means lowercase. Um, the word is too, is, if it's uh, too generic or whatever, then slash is too lowercase. Uh, would be a board. Um, again, inserting commas from below. 
uh, inserting a hyphen from above. As I mentioned, AP says to make it look like an equal sign. But then what do you do for an equal sign? And so I think just putting one, one line instead of two lines is adequate for a hyphen. So that, I've done it that way all my life, and I don't like kind of rebuild at the idea of making it look like an equal sign, because then, like I say, what do you do when you want an equal sign? But I do do this if it's supposed to be a, a uh, dash. Again, a hyphen is not the dash. The two totally different, they use totally different. They look the same uh, in print, but uh, a dash is used for different purposes. Um, so this is how you insert a dash. So the carrot, again, points to where you want to put it. We we'll call it carrot. Here I'm putting in a hyphen, so I'm coming in above, so it doesn't look like a comma. So a carrot, put in the, the comma, I mean the hyphen, apostrophe. Whatever. Uh, here, the, uh, be careful, I hear it's, it's a little bit unclear, but it's supposed to be pointing after the comma. And so I'm putting in a double quotation mark here after the comma. This is possessive, so I'm putting in a, a apostrophe between the N and the S, period after the teachers, uh, X. So with a circle around it, here are some extra letters or some extra space, so I want to close it up. So here we're not flashing, because there's nothing to flash, but I'm just closing up the extra space. So I'm just using the closure marks in here. Here we need an extra, we need a space here, so this is the space sign. Um, over here, inserting a, an E instead of the A. Sometimes you're, you're uh, kind of Partly depending how, how busy you are, how fast you want to do this. Uh, if you're trying to get rid of a letter, so you're replacing a letter, you can actually just kind of put the carrot over the, the letter. Otherwise, you can scratch, you know, you can, you can mark over it if you want to, but basically you want to make sure that it's clear that the E is supposed to replace the A. So if you can do it one swipe like I try to do, I put the carrot into the A and then and show that it's supposed to be replaced by the E. Same with replacing the A with the all here. Here I'm replacing an entire word. Um, and so here you can use the carrot above or you can put the carrot below. Because it's so wide, it's kind of hard to put a carrot from above. So I put the carrot below to show the word that's what we're going here. Uh, here I'm not replacing the T. I'm just trying to add a second T. So I'm using the, the uh, carrot to show where it's supposed to go. But I'm trying not to block out the first T to confuse them. Uh, and here I'm, in, I'm carrying in an entire word, and so um, I am using a carrot from above. I could, again, do like I did over here, however. So this is, they're both right. This is right and this is right. Um, just however you feel like doing it and whether you feel like you have space and so forth. Somehow you need a carrot to show where to put the word that you need to put in. Again, the transposition signs, I uh, need the E to go before the T, so transposition. Need the E to go before the R, transposition. Need the or to come before the word, transposition. Need mix to come before up, transposition. So those are some of the most basic copy editing symbols. They're, they're not real hard to learn. Um, and AP still say, thinks that they're important to, to know. I still use them. So it, it's in the digital age, it's, they're certainly losing their importance. But I, I think there's a reason why AP still uses them, puts them into the style book, is not everybody's using a computer all the time. Sometimes they are doing hand editing and it's important that you know what those hand editing marks mean. Uh, whether or not you're making them or somebody else is giving you something, if I'm grading a paper, I will use those marks and I will hand you a paper and you'll see a bunch of these marks and it'd be good if you knew what I was talking about. Uh, so, uh, and an editor might do that too. Okay, so I'm actually going to end this so that I can uh, uh, process this end of yesterday's, um, yesterday's lecture. Uh, are there any questions about anything I covered today or yesterday? I know it probably seems a little monotonous, um, but again, you have to become used to the idea that every professional, every good professional publication is going to have some kind of style. Whether or not they use AP style, Again, in a foreign language, they probably couldn't in some cases. It wouldn't make sense in some foreign languages to try to use AP style. Uh, but um, I would think they would want a style. Uh, how do we, how do we uh, handle situations? But again, I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm not 
uh, a, uh, an expert in languages. And so, you know, some languages, uh, certainly I, you know, I am bilingual in Spanish. And so this all can relate pretty easily to Spanish because uh, you know the the English type alphabet and so forth uh, is is fairly consistent in Spanish and Italian and those are fairly consistent. They have a few extra uh, symbols uh, that we don't have in in English, but uh, those are pretty easy to, to change. Uh, once you get into some other stuff, uh, I don't know. <laughs>